Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This meeting is being held pursuant to Executive Order 202.1, which suspended certain provisions of the open meetings law being held by teleconference, is being recorded, and there's a public access number that has been published in advance of the meeting. Thank you. I'll call the meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Michael Yurden. Michael Yurden. Pass. Herbert Yurden. Director. Edward Gilson. Edward Gilson. Here. David Holst. Here. Roy Rehill. Um, I'm here, Mr. Chairman. John Martino. Present. Bradley Trudell. Here. Paul House. Paul House. Here. James Weatherup. Here. Mary Ellen Chesbro. Present. Linda Lockwood. Here. Richard Klein. Present. Patrick Twiss. Patrick Twiss is here. Stephen Walpole. Here. Nathan Emmons. Here. Thomas Drum. Here. Lori Mangano. Here. Robert Wilmot. Robert Wilmot. Absent excuse. Marie Shad. Here. Tim Stahl. I'm here. Terry Wilbur. Here. James Krasik. Here. Moore Sorbello. Here. Mark Greco. I'm here. Ralph Stacy Jr. I'm here. Back to our past. Michael Yurden. Michael Yurden. Absent excused. Here. We have a quorum. I'm Are you here? here. Okay. We have a quorum, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Although we're meeting today from our homes throughout the county to promote social, or safe social distancing, as you can see, we're six feet apart ourselves. I would ask that we stand together for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the flag of the United States, United States, States of America, America. 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 for which it stands, one nation, under God, God. indivisible, with oh. liberty and justice for all. Justice. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Speakers, there are none. Public speakers, the resolution of the day, due to the format of the meeting, we will dispense with the public comment. Moving on to reports. Are there any reports from county officials from the Department of Health? Department of Health. Okay, thank you. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, let me ask Diane first to give you some numbers, and then we talk about uh, our this COVID nineteen strategy, and uh, how about this? Okay. So as of this morning, we were at 17 positive cases. Um, we've had 397 residents uh, either scheduled for testing or tested already. Um, again, we have the 17 positive, 286 negative results have come in and we were pending 91 uh, test results still. 
We have 99 residents under precautionary quarantine and 64 residents under mandatory isolation or quarantine. And we have one resident that has recovered and has been released from isolation. Okay, uh, this is the current situation. And uh, actually this is uh, COVID-19 activity in our department already start, started working on it for more than a month ago. And uh, our staff include uh, Diane and uh, already work without weekend for three weeks and uh, even not a day they took off. And uh, all our efforts is focused on uh, reduce or mitigate community impact from this virus. And here uh, you can see a curve here. And you can see a curve. This, this uh, solid area is if we don't do any intervention and the case number will increase drastically and then to the peak and reduce. And uh, this is what we don't want to see. So all our efforts start about uh, uh, more than two weeks ago. We started uh, tracking whose travel come back from outside the country and identify them with information from CDC and the state health department. And uh, this already lasted more than two, three weeks. And also we do uh, community mitigation, not just isolate these people. We also, like uh, uh, governor already put the social distancing and the individual uh, hand washing. The purpose is two purposes. One is we hope this peak delay. You can see we, we want to push the peak delay. And then more drastically, we wanted to push the peak case number down. So we generally we call it uh, in our department we always call flatten the curve. This uh, shaded area is the flatten the curve. This is what we want to do. Flatten the curve and give time and reduce the number, the number, let our healthcare system to handle it. Next slide please. Here, uh, this is a table uh, I uh, updated to uh, March 25th. Okay, it's not the most updated uh, table. And the different country, different performance. And this table really can show why we do so. And the, the blue lighted line is Italy and uh, Spain. Okay, and uh, this pink, I uh, highlighted uh, Germany and uh, Norway. And the three yellow highlighted is East Asia country, uh, South Korea, Japan, and uh, Taiwan. So what we try to, I try to put here, make a comparison is because Italy and Spain, their health care system collapse when virus hit them. So they have high death rate, high death number, Spain the same. Comparatively, Germany and Norway, they, when virus hit their countries, they hold their healthcare system. So you can see they have low death rate and uh, only two among a million population, three among a million population, and their death rate and the death number and the total cases is much smaller than uh, Italy, Italy and Spain. If you look at the East Asia country, the advantage of this maintain, uh, maintain this healthcare system more dominant, and you can see. So this is the principle, guide us, mitigate uh, this, COVID-19 activities in Oswego County. And uh, what what we have done is, yes, our team uh, monitored all the 
activity, people come back and uh, monitor them and uh, isolate them for, or quarantine them. And this is already performed for more than two weeks. And uh, at the beginning, several cases, they are all travel related. And uh, most recently, as you know, uh, we already have community uh, acquired spread. And uh, I, 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 I can say, yes, where is the virus? Virus is in our backyard, everywhere. And uh, that's a big game changer. And I'm very pleased the uh, end of last week, uh, Chairman, yes announced and uh, this is a community acquired and everybody in the diligently uh, do social distancing and washing hands and uh, uh, give time to our healthcare system and uh, and uh, the key is really we, we need to maintain our first respondent like EMS law enforcement and our healthcare system and uh, this I know over the past uh, uh, more than a week also, and uh, we had a very big pressure. Why not release the number? Why not release the location? And uh, we insisted and uh, yeah, uh, for privacy reason and for avoid uh, discrimination and uh, we didn't release it, but uh, gradually we will release. This morning, uh, we already released where the, where's the case confirm the case and the ways the tested the case came from and it's already spread all over the country uh, all over the county and uh, uh, this is my prepared presentation and uh, Diane, you have any add on no I um, just let you know that our call center is up and running and has been running uh, for about two weeks straight throughout the weekends as well and uh, call volume varies a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I think we had our record high with 164 calls. Sunday, I think we had about 101. Saturday was about 60 some. Um, so it varies, but uh, we've been staffing that and uh, hopefully getting folks questions answered and getting them uh, transferred to our nurses uh, to be scheduled for testing if indicated. Oh, uh, uh, let me add here, and actually we have two phone lines. One phone line is open for the public, and another phone line is open to the healthcare providers. And uh, this phone line, uh, I, I was told that our phone line waiting time is much more shorter than state 1-800 line. And our nurse line is more busier than our public line is because so many clinicians, yes, wanted to talk with our nurse. At the county level, we, as uh, an agency, authorized the testing. So a lot of explanation and a lot of uh, consultation and a lot of decision making. So this this is what uh, what we are we are doing. No. And, and any uh, legislators have any questions? Thank you. Any questions? No, thank you for your report. There being no questions, I would move on to uh, Mr. Church, the county administrator, has some slides. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, we wanted to put up this slide because it relates to the four resolutions that you are being asked to vote on today. Uh, you're very familiar with our normal organizational structure of government uh, with the de 23 departments, the legislature and and all reporting to the public. All that is still in place and working uh, to provide the core services that government provides, uh, which have not been closed by executive order. But when you have a state of emergency or a public health emergency like we're in now, uh, this structure that you see on your screens uh, comes into play and runs in parallel with our normal government structure. Uh, the, at the apex, the command unit, uh, that's our incident command. By the way, this is, this is what's called the incident command system. It's universally uh, utilized across the United States after decades of development 
and real world experience in emergencies. This is how uh, governments organize themselves or organize their response to uh, emergency situations. At the top is your command unit that includes your incident commander. We are in a state of emergency, so the incident commander is the chairman of the legislature. We're also in a public health emergency, uh, so he is joined by our public health director. Um, uh, the chairman's been doing a great job, has made some difficult decisions, and our public health director, uh, I just want you to know we're, we're fortunate uh, in that our public health director also happens to be an epidemiologist, uh, which is the study of disease and viruses and how they uh, spread and what the response to them should be, so we're very fortunate in that. The command unit is supported by uh, information and work by the four pillars you see below it operations, uh, logistics, planning, and administration and finance. Uh, the command unit relies on the information and the work of those uh, four uh, areas uh, and to make decisions. And once those decisions are made, that flows back down to those four units to implement. The, what we're here about today is the command unit and the administration and finance unit. You'll be asked to vote on a uh, uh, resolutions that strengthen those two portions of our incident command system. One resolution uh, appoints an emergency management director, which has been vacant for uh, a couple of months. Uh, that uh, is the primary advisor to the chairman of the legislature uh, in the command unit. The administration and finance unit in this particular instance has four primary uh, objectives. One is to uh, track and account for coronavirus related expenses, to track and seek out revenues uh, to help us respond to that. Uh, also uh, uh, in that expense portion is procurement of supplies uh, that our logistics people get out to our operations people, which as you've, if you've been watching the news, you know is critically important. Also human resources to allocate uh, uh, our work staff to where they're needed in case we have to reallocate non-essential personnel into essential roles. And finally, the fourth function will be budgeting and financial recovery. The uh, other three resolutions affect expenses and revenues today. Uh, the first is to set up a, uh, an account uh, that is specific to coronavirus response so that we can uh, make purchases uh, out of a singular account. It helps us track and create a master account uh, for reimbursement purposes later down the road. Uh, the other two are, are coronavirus revenue uh, resolutions uh, to help us pay for some things, we, some expenses we've already incurred. So those four resolutions strengthen the command and they strengthen the administration and finance uh, portions of the incident command system that is used to for the uh, to respond to the coronavirus incident we're in now. So be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Any reports of special committees? No, thank you. Moving on to resolutions of the day. Uh, resolution SM1 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Resolution authorizing budgetary modification, unappropriated fund balance, COVID response. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as uh, our administrator just um, explained, this is $500,000 going into a, a separate account line so we can uh, track and stay on top of what is spent through our COVID-19 um, COVID uh, expenses and uh, possible uh, reimbursements. Um, under discussion, uh, legislator shop. Oh. Mr. Chairman, um, 
what is the current fund balance? Can you hear me? Yes, I heard you about this later. Um, it's currently in the 18th What is it? All right, but I've unmuted here. That's it's approximately 18 million at this point, which is just a snapshot of the particular day that they run the query. But I see Phil Church is uh, is ready to answer if we need be. The um, uh, I haven't seen the treasurer's final uh, uh, annual report yet, but I believe uh, we ended uh, 2019 with about 25 million. Uh, this that fluctuates the fund balance fluctuates throughout the year. He did tell me that we are at 18. Of course, that's after we make payments like our debt payment and things like that. Uh, I'm also, as I as I mentioned, the administrative end of this uh, incident commands tracking what revenues may be coming in. Uh, I believe that there is uh, the federal government has uh, allocated a certain amount of money to us. I'm trying to get that verified. It is in the uh, a few million. Uh, the um, what we are for now we are fine and can afford our COVID response. Uh, what we're going to be looking at down the road uh, within a month or two is what happens with our sales tax revenues, tax revenues that may require some adjustments down the road. Uh, but right now our fund balance is and, and our reserves are at a point where we can safely approve this resolution and get the supplies in, that we need to to our front line. Thank you. Will we still have the I didn't hear the question. Will we still have the April 9th public hearing? That's a question for Mr. Chairman and the county attorney. Certainly, legis Legislator Schlott, Schlott, we will make sure that's an ongoing discussion. Um, we will certainly keep you apprised of whatever that determination is just as soon as we can. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I would request a uh, roll call vote, please. Thank you. We will roll call vote for the clerk. Call the roll. Michael Yurden. Michael Yurden. Pass. Herbert Yurden. Affirmative. Edward Gilson. I vote yes. David Holst. I vote yes. Roy Rehill. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. John Martino. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I vote in the affirmative. Bradley Trudell. I vote yes. Paul House. I vote yes. James Weatherup. I vote yes. Mary Ellen Chesbro. I vote yes. Linda Lockwood. Linda Lockwood. Pass. I vote yes. Yes. Richard Klein. I vote yes. Patrick Twist. I vote yes. Stephen Walpole. I vote yes. Nathan Emmons. I vote yes. Thomas Drum. Yes. Lori Mangano. I vote yes. Robert Wilmot have absent excused. Marie Shad. Yes. Tim Stahl. I vote yes. Terry Wilbur. I vote yes. James Krasick. I vote yes. Moore Sorbello. I vote yes. Mark Greco. I vote yes. Ralph Stacy Jr. I vote yes. Return to the past. Michael Yurden.
Michael Yurden. We marked absent and excused. That is 23 in favor, two absent. Yes. We have a resolution SM2 by legislative correct. Mr. Chairman, I present the following resolution for your consideration. Do we have a second? I second the motion. Second by legislator Greco. We'll first speak to the heading. Resolution authorizing budget modification, health department COVID-19 funding from Health Research Incorporated. So this is $122,426. It is um, being received as a grant for COVID-19 response activities. The funding will be used to support public health staff in incident management, information management, countermeasures and mitigation, surge management, and biosurveillance. Uh, the legislators each have in their packet a breakdown of what particular budget lines this money will go into, which will help us pay for some of the expenses. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I would ask for a roll call vote. Okay. Michael Yurden. Michael Yurden. Marcus Pass. Herbert Yurden. Yes. Edward Gilson. Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. David Holst. David Holst. Marking as a pass. Roy Rehill. Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. John Martino. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Bradley Trudell. I vote yes. Paul House. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. James Weatherup. I vote yes. Mary Ellen Chesbro. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. Linda Lockwood. I vote yes. Richard Klein. I vote yes. Patrick Twist. I vote yes. Stephen Walpole. I vote yes. Nathan Emmons. I vote yes. Thomas Drum. I vote yes. Lori Mangano. I vote yes. Robert Wilmot. Robert Wilmot. Morgan absent excused. Marie Shad. Yes. Tim Stahl. I vote yes. Terry Wilbur. I vote yes. James Krosick. I vote yes. Morris Cerbello. I vote yes. Mark Greco. I vote yes. Ralph Stacy Jr. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Returning to the past, Michael Yurden. I vote yes. Vote yes. David Holst. I vote yes. Mr. Chairman, 24 in favor, one absent. Thank you very much. Resolution passes. Thank you. Resolution SM3 by Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution for your considerations. We have a second. I, I second it. Herb Yurden. Herb Yurden. So will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, health department, public health emergency preparedness, additional COVID-19 funding. So this is a uh, allocation of funding for $15,000, which once again will help us. Uh, this is an annual public health emergency preparedness grant from Health Research Incorporated. Uh, and uh, I would urge that we pass this and uh, allocate the money. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Thank you. Roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? 
Mr. Chairman, I apologize. There was a question. The screen was uh, was not open. Oh, sorry. Um, I will rescind my uh, motion for a roll call vote. Thank you. Uh, Legislator Scott. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, do you know currently how many beds are available at Oswego Hospital and how many ventilators and protective gear? Is there an inventory? I myself, I don't Mr. Chairman, I can help. Excuse me? Uh, th uh, this is Phil. I could help with that question Hi, if you'd Phil. like. Thank you. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I do know that the Swiggle Hospital search plan increases their number of beds by 65%. Okay, and we don't know the ventilator number. I can get that. Thank you. Other discussion? Bringing a motion and requesting we'll call vote, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Michael Yurden. Michael Yurden. Pass. I Herbert vote Yurden. yet. I vote yes. Michael Yurden, is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Herbert Yurden. That's a yes. Edward Gilson. Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. David Holst. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Roy Rio. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. John Martino. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Bradley Trudell. I vote yes. Paul House. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. James Weatherup. I vote yes. Mary Ellen Chesbro. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Linda Lockwood. I vote yes. Richard Klein. I vote yes. Patrick Twist. I vote yes. Stephen Walpole. I vote yes. Nathan Emmons. I vote yes. Thomas Drum. I vote yes. Lori Mangano. I vote yes. Robert Wilmot. Robert Wilmot, absent excused. Marie Schott. Yes. Tim Stahl. I vote yes. Terry Wilbert. I vote yes. James Krasick. I vote yes. Moore Cervello. I vote yes. Mark Greco. I vote yes. Ralph Stacy Jr. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, one absent. Thank you. I will, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I will ask that anybody who took control of the screen please uh, relinquish that so I have access to it again, please. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution SM4 by Legislator Wilbur. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the following resolution and urge you to We have a second. Mr. Chairman, this is Legislator Trudell. I second the motion. Thank you. We have a second. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution appointing Director of Emergency Management for the County of Oswego. Mr. Chairman, this resolution will need to be amended, and I will make that motion to amend, place the name of Captain Palmatesso at a grade 40, step 16, with a salary of $65,575. I second that motion, Mr. Chairman. It was seconded by Legislator Martino. Any discussion or any amendment? Uh, on the amendment, Michael Yurden. I vote yes. Herbert Yurden. I vote yes. Edward Gilson. 
Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. David Holst. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Roy Rehold. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. John Martino. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Bradley Trudeau. I vote yes. Paul House. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. James Weatherup. I vote yes. Mary Ellen Chesbro. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Linda Lockwood. I vote yes. Richard Klein. I vote yes. Patrick Twist. I vote yes. Stephen Walpole. I vote yes. Nathan Emmons. I vote yes. Thomas Drum. Uh, I vote yes. I apologize, Thomas Drum. I vote yes to the amendment. Thank you. Lori Mangano. I vote yes. Robert Wilmots, absent excused. Marie Schott. Yes. Tim Stahl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I vote yes. Terry Wilbur. I vote yes. James Karasik. I vote yes. Moore Cerbello. I vote yes. Mark Greco. I vote yes. Ralph Stacey Jr. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, that is 24 in favor of the amendment and one absent. Okay. Back to the resolution is amended. Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. so, the sponsor of this resolution bringing it forward along with a, a member of the search committee for this. We have a number of very qualified that rose to the top. Tough, tough decision. Put our together, huge qualifications of the majority of the committee. I say, very common. Now, more importantly, we can forward and we close it. Thank you. not the uh, normal situation for one to come and, and take any position so we wish you luck and we, we look forward to um thank you any other discussion roll call vote mr chairman thank you we'll roll. michael yurden I vote yes. Herbert Yurden. I vote yes. Edward Gilson. Mr. Chairman, I vote yes. David Holst. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Roy Rehill. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. John Martino. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Bradley Trudell. I vote yes. Paul House. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. James Weatherup. I vote yes. Mary Ellen Chesbro. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Linda Lockwood. I vote yes. Richard Klein. I vote yes. Patrick Twist. I vote yes. Stephen Walpole. I vote yes. Nathan Emmons. I vote yes. Thomas Drum. I vote yes. Lori Mangano. I vote yes. Robert Wilmot. Absent excused. Marie Schott. Yes. Tim Stahl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I vote yes. Terry Wilbur. I vote yes. James Krasick. I vote yes. Morris Cervello. I vote yes. Mark Greco. I vote yes. Ralph Stacey Jr. I vote yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, one absent. Thank you. 
unfinished? Are there no there are no more resolutions? Is there any unfinished business? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Legislator Shad asked about the bed capacity and ventilators at Oswego Health. Under their surge plan, they have increased beds from 78 to 129 and ventilator beds from 8 and to 16. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Any other discussions on any unfinished business? Thank you. Moving on, any miscellaneous business? Thank you. All of my colleagues in the legislature, and I uh, thank the few chairman for your leadership on this, uh, through this situation that we're in, along with our county administrator and every single employee who works for the Oswego County um, agencies or, or in our employment. We really have stepped up. We definitely appreciate your effort at this time. And to our constituents, we are working day and night with those employees to make sure we protect and we keep these all safe during this uh, time of uncertainty. There is a, um, a bright spot on the horizon. We are getting there. Let's just work together and practice the social distancing. Um, it about done, but I'd like to thank everyone. And I would like to uh, mention that we're still talking about our weight class. And that's a good thing. I look for the appropriate motion. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. We stand adjourned.